Hello, everyone. Today we're going to talk about 12.1, three-dimensional coordinate system. First, we're going to talk about 3D space. To locate a point in a plane, two numbers are necessary. We know that any point in the plane can be represented as an ordered pair, a comma b, where a and b are real numbers. A is the x coordinate and b is the y coordinate. And for this reason, a plane is called two dimensional. To locate a point in space, three numbers are required. We represent any point in space by an ordered triple A, B, C, where A, B, C are real numbers. In order to represent points in space, we first choose a fixed point O called the origin and three directed lines through O that are perpendicular to each other. They are called the coordinate axis and labeled the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Usually we think of the x-axis and y-axis as being horizontal and the z-axis as being vertical. And we draw the orientation of the axis this way. The direction of the z-axis is determined by the y-hand rule, as illustrated here. If you curve your fingers of your right hand around the z-axis in the direction of a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation from the positive x-axis to the positive y-axis, then your thumb points in the positive direction of the z-axis. The three coordinate axes determine the three coordinate planes. The x, y plane is a plane that contains the x axis and the y axis. The y, z plane here contains the y and z axis. The x, z plane contains the x and z axis. These three coordinate planes divide the space into eight parts called octants. The first octant here in the foreground is determined by the positive axis, the positive x, y, and z axis. Now, because many people have some difficulty visualizing diagram or three-dimensional figure, you may find it helpful to do the following. So look at any bottom corner of a room and call this corner here the origin. The wall on the left is the XZ plane. The wall on your right is the YZ plane. And the floor is in the XY plane. The X axis run along the intersection of the floor and the left wall. The Y axis run along the intersection of the floor and the Y wall. The Z axis runs up from the floor toward the ceiling along the intersection of the two wall. You are situated in the first octant here. And you can now imagine seven other rooms situated in the other seven octant. So there will be one, two, three others on the same floor. And then imagine four other octant on the floor below. They are all connected by the common corner point O.
Now, if P over here is any point in space, we let A be the direct distance from the YZ plane, from this YZ plane over here, to this point P. So imagine on this point P, draw a line that's perpendicular to the YZ plane. Then the direct distance from this point to the YG plane is A, it's an X coordinate. Similarly, we let B be the direct distance from this XG plane to this point P. And we let C to be the direct distance from this point to this XY plane. We represent the point P by the order triple a, B, C of real numbers. And we call A, B, C the coordinates of P. A is the X coordinate, B is the Y coordinate, and C is the Z coordinate. So to locate the point A, B, C, we can start at the origin, and then we move A unit along the X axis, then B unit parallel to the y-axis, and, and then C unit parallel to the z-axis, and we end up at this point P, A, B, C. The point P, this point P over here, A, B, C, uh, determine a rectangular box. Look at this rectangular box over here. Okay. And if we drop a perpendicular line from point P to the xy plane right here. Then we get a point here, Q. We coordinate A, B, 0. Notice that the Z coordinate will be 0 because it's on the xy plane. Z coordinate will be 0. Similarly, this if we drop a um, perpendicular line from this point P to the YG plane here, we end up at this point R with X coordinate to be zero. From this point, draw a perpendicular line to, to the XZ plane, and we end up at this point S with Y coordinate to be zero. This three point over here, they are called projections of this point P onto each plane. So this point over here, this three point Q, R, S, they are called projection of this point P onto the X, Y plane, Y, Z plane, and XZ frame, respectively. Now let's illustrate this with two points. The first point we have is negative four, comma three, comma negative five. So on the x-axis, we're going to go to the negative x-axis and end at negative four. And then we're going to parallel to the y-axis to move three unit, and then go to parallel to the z-axis. We're going to go down five unit, and we end at this point. Now this point over here, x coordinate is three. So on the x-axis, we go to three, and then because y coordinate is negative two. So we're going to go to the negative y direction, two unit, and then um, the z coordinate is negative six. So from here, we're going to go to the negative z direction and go six unit here, and then um, we end up at this point. The Cartesian product, r cos r cos r, uh, is a set of all or the triple of real numbers and it's denoted by R3. Uh, X, Y, Z, each coordinate 
will be will number. So we have given a one-to-one -one correspondence between point P in space to an other triple ABC in R3. So each ABC represents a point in space, and each point in space we have a unique um, coordinate triple. It is called the three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. Notice that in terms of coordinate, the first octant can be described as the set of points whose coordinates are all positive. Now we're going to talk about surfaces. In two-dimensional analytic geometry, the graph of an equation involving x and y is a curve in two-dimensional space, R2. In three-dimensional analytic geometry, an equation in x, y, and z represent a surface in R3. For example, what surface in R3 are represented by the following equation? Now pause a moment and think about it. The equation z equals 3 represents the set of all other triple such that the z coordinate will be equal to 3, which is the set of all points in R3 whose z coordinates is 3. And x and y can each be any value. There's no restriction on x and y. This is the horizontal plane that is parallel to the, the xy plane and the um, three unit above it. So imagine this horizontal plane here. It's going to parallel to this xy plane. And it's going to be three unit above three unit above this xy plane. So folding, folding above this xy plane. Now look at this part B of this example. Now we're looking at this equation y equal to 5. Now try to pause a moment and think about what this equation represents in three-dimensional space. This equation, y equal to 5, represents the set of all points in R3, three-dimensional space, whose y coordinate is 5. So this is this vertical plane over here that is parallel to this xz plane and 5 unit to the right of it. So think about this vertical plane here. It's going to intersect this y-axis at 5, and it is parallel to this xz plane. Notice that this equation has no restriction on x and y. x and y could be any real numbers. So in general, if k is a constant, then x equal to k represents a plane that is parallel to the yz plane. So for example, for example, this plane here in the front, right? This one over here. Okay, it's located on a plane that is parallel to this yz plane over here. And the equation of this plane over here is x equal to k. Okay, uh, in this case, actually k here is a. So this surface here that has equation x equal to a. Uh, similarly, for y equal to k, it represents this surface over here. Okay. Uh, it is a surface that's parallel to this xz plane. And z equal to k, think about this surface over here. Okay. Uh, represent a plane that's parallel to this xy plane. Uh, in this figure, the face of 
this rectangular box are formed by three coordinate plane, which is the xy plane, the floor, xz plane, which is the left wall, yz plane, which is the y wall, and also the plane x equal to a, this front, and the one on the right here is y equal to b. The one that is above here is z equal to c. Distance and spheres. We are all familiar with this distance formula in two-dimensional space, right? So for three-dimensional space, R3, uh, it's going to be very similar. The distance between two points with P1 to be X1, Y1, Z1, and P2 to be X2, Y2, Z2, the direct distance between the two points is going to be the, the square of the quantity of x2 minus x1 plus the square of the quantity of y2 minus y1 plus the square of the quantity of z2 minus z1 and then take the square root. For example, let's find an equation of a sphere whose radius is equal to r and center at this c has coordinate triple h, k, and l. Now by definition, a sphere is the set of all points p whose distance from the center is r. So imagine this sphere here with the center c right here. The distance from any point on the sphere to the center is equal to r, equal to the radius. So p is on the sphere if and only if the distance from point p to the center c is equal to r. If we square both sides, we get the square of the distance of pc is equal to r squared. And we know that we use the distance formula. If we square this distance, we end up with x minus. Now, because C has coordinate h, k, and l, so the distance, the square of this distance here is going to be the square of the quantity x minus h, and the, plus the square of the quantity y minus k, plus the square of the quantity z minus l, and then they will be equal to r squared. This is the equation of the sphere with center h, k, l, and radius r. Now this is the end of 12.1. I will see you guys in 12.2. Thank you for learning with me today. 